Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome once again to the WP Builds Podcast. You have reached episode number 349, entitled is 20 years too long in web tech? It was published on Thursday, the 9th of November, 2023. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and just before I get into that chat with David Wormsley, first of all, a few small bits of housekeeping. The first thing to mention, I've mentioned it before, and I shall certainly mention it again, is our Black Friday deals page. We've collated well over 100 deals so far, and that number is only set to rise. We're kind of making it your go-to place in the run-up to Black Friday. The URL is supremely easy to remember, wpbuilds.com forward slash black. And over there, you're going to find a searchable, filterable list of all of the plugins, themes, blocks, hosting, all in the WordPress space in the run-up to Black Friday. So bookmark that. There's also a button on there if you want to add your own deal. So if you are in the WordPress space and you have your own product service, feel free to click the add a deal link and fill out the form and we'll get that put on the page so people can discover it. And if you fancy helping out, that page can be sponsored. Right at the top of the page are three little black boxes from companies like WS Form, Gravity Form and Checkout WC. They have sponsored that page already. And if you want to join them, feel free. There is a section underneath that called This Could Be You. If you click on the Get Pride of Place in Now button, you'll be able to join that page and help the podcast out. The other thing to mention is that we're doing a load of series and shows and all of that during the week. We're doing shows with Leo from Gato GraphQL and a weekly show with Sabrina Zidane. You can find all of those on the WPBuilds.com homepage. Just scroll down a little bit and there's a section called Coming Up. Go there and find out what is happening when. Sabrina's helping out with speeding up your WordPress websites, but also we'll be having Peach and Eri back soon as well to talk about UI and UX. So don't say that we don't do a lot in the WordPress space because I think we do. The other thing to mention is if you fancy making a comment about the podcast episode, today's episode, I guess, or any other episode, please do that on the WPBuilds.com website. Search for the episode number and leave us a comment there after all. WordPress has a fabulous commenting system. The WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL and 24-7 support. Bundle that with The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place. Invoice clients and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by heading to go.me forward slash WP builds and we really do thank GoDaddy Pro for their ongoing support of the WP Builds podcast. Okay, what have we got for you today? As I said, it's called Is 20 Years Too Long in Web Tech? If you cast your mind back, if you've been in this game as long as David and I have, there has been so much change. Have we given over the web to large corporations where all of the content is now siloed? Do we even know how to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and all of those kind of things? Have we got a bright future in the web? Is CSS, for example, and all of the different pieces that are being added to that, is that going to save us and make the web a happy, friendly place again? There genuinely is tons in this episode. I really enjoyed recording it with David, and I hope that you enjoy it. Hello, it's the 19th episode of our Thinking the Unthinkable series. And today's ambiguous, perhaps offensive topic is, <laughs> is 20 years too long in web tech? Full of our usual British cheerfulness, <laughs> we're celebrating WordPress's 20th birthday <laughs> with a title implying its potential demise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was such a, that was such a snarky introduction. 20 <laughs> years. It doesn't matter whether it's in tech or not. 20 years is a is a really long time. <laughs> it looks yeah, that way anyway. Uh, it is ambiguous because we could read this one as, is it time for us to sling our hooks? Because that's about the number of years that we've been doing web tech, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is interesting because before we hit record, as we always do, we spend quite a long time just waffling and thinking about what we're going to yeah. talk about. And one of the things that came out of that conversation is 
both you and I share a very similar character trait, which is our mm. inability to stick with anything for almost any amount of time. Uh, but tech and working with the web, in both of our cases, is the is the thing that you know is the yeah. what's what's the phrase? It's the thing that disproves the rule. There's a phrase around that. I've forgotten what it is. And um, and this is the this is the longest I've been doing anything. I've flitted from job to job and couldn't really settle on anything, and accidentally came into this and still really enjoying it. Yeah, I think it's because it's you know it's it's seen as the place which is constantly innovating and things just change, don't they? I mean, we we think sort of five years is our point where we feel we need to shake things up. But we can actually do that within technology. You know, yeah, we can yeah. shake things up and do something different. So, well, that's true. Yeah. And as we're about to discuss, five years, really, every five years, if you were to take that as the metric of how long you typically would be able to stick at something, a job or whatever it may be, mm. um, really, the the internet goes through. It's unrecognizable five years into the future. Yeah. You know, if you go back five years and f back a further five years. There's always something interesting cropping up, whether or not it's useful or desirable is is probably what we're going to talk about. But it definitely is um, the changing of the landscape is constant. Yeah. And um, probably we should just explain the reason for this topic is because we've not actually had one in all of these years that is actually dedicated to looking at why some web tech flourishes and some dies, you know, and it's definitely not about predicting the future of WordPress because we have no clue about that. Yeah, well, um, that, that's the case. I mean, I haven't a clue about what the, the internet or WordPress or, or almost anything really technological will be like in five years' time. I mean, I can tell you about what my house will look like in five years' time and the kind of meals that I'll probably be eating in five <laughs> years' time. That's typically not going to change. But tech and the landscape and the devices that we're going to use, not a clue. Yeah. And I think also, I mean, it's 20 years for WordPress and it's 30 years for the web. And um, wow. I yeah. think I, it's, it's kind of a, I feel there's a sort of moment of reflection going on. But I, uh, again, it's really difficult because I follow certain social media and I just, I'm doing that myself because I'm changing, you know, again, the, the five years is up on page building. So I'm sort of looking to advance my skills with more technical stuff. So I'm looking for people who are also reflecting as well. But I do see that going on. Um, you you mentioned about Tim Berners-Lee earlier. Yeah, it's interesting because if you if you think about the pioneers of the internet, mm. and Tim Berners-Lee is the person that came to mind, having, having had a history with the entire thing. So my yeah. understanding, and I could be wrong about this, but my understanding is he was the person that kind of came up with the idea of a hyperlink. So you could embed a link in something which would then link to another document or resource somewhere else on another uh, machine and all of that. And I know that there was a whole bunch of technologies which needed to collide uh, in computing yeah. in general for the internet to happen. But what we know as the internet, HTML with the hyperlink is kind of his brainchild. I think he's gotten to a point where he's he's questioning what it's all been for, you know, whether the incentives of the internet are now aligned with what his goal was in the beginning and I think probably, like all of us, he didn't anticipate some of the things that have happened. And, and I, I get the impression that he, if he could rewind the clock on the internet and put in different constraints rather than it being entirely open, I, I think he feels that some aspects of the internet have, have not been beneficial for us. Yeah, indeed. I think there's one thing, actually, we're using the terms interchangeably, but I think he's... Uh, assumed to be the person with the web. So that's really with the HTML right. and these documents where the internet preceded that in yes, my understanding yes. of it. Yeah. So I think the, so it, for the purposes, I guess, of this conversation, we're talking about the web, the basic sort of HTML, which we all work with mostly to, uh, or assume is there rather than the internet. Cause it could be a, I think you've made this point earlier that, you know, in the future we can't anticipate it, but the internet could be something entirely different and off the web. You know, HTML as the foundation of it could be gone. You know, and I think yeah. that's possible. But yeah, so yeah, I, I agree, and I, I've been checking him out a bit recently because I've become again interested a little bit in this history, and it seems his Web three um, is what he's moving towards, where he felt that the internet itself 
was a useful for individuals to be able to connect with other people. And he thinks the sort of next wave of that was this Facebook era, you know, where we've got into data and collecting that. We're not just sharing these documents, but we're sharing, keeping the data. And what's happening is that it's these big companies now that own our data in order to sort of commercialize that and try and identify what people might want to see. And his belief, I think, for the the next wave and what he's working on is this idea that everybody gets to own their own data and this will be better, <laughs> you know? Yes. So he's working with governments and, um, yeah, I think the, yeah. It BBC really is well. interesting in that I, I have, independently of him, I've kind of come to some similar conclusions in that I don't really know why, but I've been appraising what I have given over to internet and companies on the internet, what what bits of my life I've surrendered. So, for example, you know, to-do lists, they've all gone online. My photography library has kind of gone mm. online. Obviously, there's the whole trove of social media stuff that's all gone online. And it really, the minute I click upload or save or whatever, it's not really mine anymore. There's this this thing that I got into, this contract that I probably agreed to without reading it, which says that stuff's not yours. And I've independently of Tim, I've I've sort of started to reevaluate that and think actually it would be it would be better if I owned all of this stuff because I don't really know whether Facebook will be around or whether my note taking app will be around in five years time. Mm. And I think one of the things that we can be certain of is that most of these companies won't be around in twenty years time. And so some of the things that I want to be. Um, I want them to be around forever, photography being one of them, the photographs of my kids and what have you. I've really got to think about, well, where are these being stored and how are they being saved and should I print them out and go back to the real world? This is this is a thing. I want my data to be mine, and I do mm. see that as a sort of growing trend. And on websites, you see that now, don't you? You see a lot of people saying, you know, we don't have access to your data, blah, 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 blah. It's all saved onto the, you know, it's not saved into the cloud. It's on your computer and I just actually got a uh, a diary app, like a journaling app, and I, I moved from one to another because I like to write a few things each each day, and yeah. um, and it, it's local, um, or at least the data you can save it to the cloud, but it's encrypted so nobody can get access to it. So yeah, yeah, I, I was listening to a, a wonderful talk on CSS Day. Um, this is kind of a yearly conference for CSS people, and it was a person talking about encouraging people to get back to the early web where it was exciting, where people built their own personal sites and there wasn't a commercial side to it. But she was also talking about how she was leaving things like Facebook and how, you know, she and Twitter, and she was trying to retrieve her data, which is yours, but they really own the conversations that come in. So it's only right. your data, the your outputs that you've got. So that's not it. And she was also mentioning about um, how MySpace, I didn't know this, but apparently according to her talk, uh, as I understood it, uh, they lost kind of all of their data. So all that data you might have put up on, on MySpace is just entirely gone. That whole oh, interesting. Gone. Yeah. yeah. Lost as and in accidentally lost or lost as in couldn't afford to keep the uh, servers going, so shot them down kind of thing. Oh, it could be that. I don't know. I mean, it was a passing comment. And I thought, well, I wasn't even aware of that. I mean, not that I'm worried to get my content from <laughs> MySpace. Um, no, but uh, no, no, yeah. That's right. <laughs> but that's a good example, though, isn't it? Because that company... At the time yeah. that you were using it, and I was using yeah. it, it felt like, well, this is this is going to be here forever, right? This is absolutely going to be here forever. And I'm currently staring at a Google Doc, and I assume that this will be here until I pass away, but maybe not. I have no realistic expectation to believe that Google as a company will survive for another 50 years. I guess it's been around for probably 20 years, a bit like WordPress, maybe a bit more, but I have no intuition as to whether that's going to be around or not. So this this inexorable rise of services online and things that we do and we put everything online, I do feel that, for me at least anyway, it's time to sort of drag some of that stuff back and uh, and have it stored locally in some more meaningful way to me. Yeah, exactly. And, and that talk I just mentioned there, it was very much about that, you know, moving to Facebook, then you don't create anything that's your own space any longer. But there was a wonderful in, I mean, this is going out much later, but in this week that I follow um, Hayden Pickering, 
Mm-hmm. It's a really, really clever guy. He does a thing called, and you, you really must watch them, um, if you don't mind beat swearing, web <laughs> briefs videos. Um, and it's fabulous. And the one that he put out this uh, week was just a very short one. He's doing very short ones now, which was just basically somebody writing to all of these imaginary uh, services and everything saying, dear sir, you know, since the terms of your conditions where I learned that you now own my pancreas, I will be ending. And I suggest that everybody moves over to this next one.com. And it goes on for a series of these, but he's basically making a point how much we trust these billionaires, if you like, to kind of look after our data. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and, and at each point, you know, we keep moving and moving from this because it never quite lines with you know our, uh, our personal politics or what they own of us isn't yeah. that, isn't that sort of tim berners lee isn't that basically the knob of his complaint yeah. about the internet is that I we have so. we've we've somehow in the web 2.0 cycle we've all these internet companies have come along which are able to consume our data and obviously you know in return in many cases for useful things so google yeah. docs very useful uh, my note taking app very useful, but there are there are consequences to that, and the 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 tracking and the the the, the continual um, advertising nature of the modern web, the fact that you know these services in large measure can't exist without ad dollars, and therefore the incentive to push adverts towards you more and more and more and more, and to bend your thinking so that you you know you subscribe to this or you purchase that. And to be able to prove all of that, I think that's where he's concerned is that the internet has, be- has for many people become something that he didn't anticipate, which was just a collection of documents linked to one another. Essentially, just more knowledge, sharing of knowledge. Now we've got all of the, the sort of social media addiction and all of that, which definitely wasn't predicted. Mm, yeah. I mean, he makes a very good point. I mean, it's, it's turning the logic upside down, but his, his claim is that he thinks he's probably quite difficult all this you know setting up these systems so you can harvest this data and that's where most people not just the advertisers is kind of using and getting the right. money and but that it's it's kind of a bit of a blunt tool so he uses uh, an argument i've seen you talk about where it's a family who regularly will pick certain holidays they wouldn't get the certain advertising with the way that everybody's collecting this data for something different whereas if they own their own data they might it might help them to decide what they don't want any longer and look for something different. So it's a kind of reversing of the logic. Um, yeah, hard to get your head around. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting, actually. I mean, there's definitely some benefits, isn't there? That you know, here we are talking to one another. We met on a social media platform that had consumed yeah. vast troves of data about us both. But yeah, I, th- I think on balance, it. it I, I think I want to have control of all of that sort of stuff again, and actually been making inroads into searching for for replacements for quite a few things, and and happy to report that there are quite a lot of alternatives out there. Some of which seem to be um, very, very, very good indeed. I moved over just recently to a an app called AnyType. It's in beta at the moment, but it's a bit like Notion. But you download it onto your computer. There is there is cloud storage, but it's all encrypted with a key. And if you lose that key, you are done. They can't get it back for you. So things like that seem to be the way that I'm going to go in the future. Yeah, and and your choice of WordPress is partly right. You know, yeah, yeah, because you wanted something that was independent that you owned, and that was it to go for an open source solution rather than something else. I think you know, with it's it's very likely that that's going to be our view anyway, isn't it? On Data. <laughs> yeah, do you know it's interesting. I, I think I think what really got me into it back then was a that it was y- utilitarian. It worked. Um, yeah. B that it was free. That, as much as I hate to admit it, that probably is part of the thing. You didn't have to sign up to some sort of license. That was great. Um, yeah. And then the obviously along for the ride comes the fact that well you've you've now got it even if everybody stops working on WordPress. It'll keep working in its current form as long as you've got the infrastructure to keep it up. So, yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah, exactly. There is another side of the web, which I think people are reflecting on a lot at the moment. And I saw, I was talking to you about this, um, Douglas Crockford, who's oh, yeah. the person who oh, has been an advocate for 20 years of JavaScript right. and was the inventor of JSON. And, um, you know, I, not that I could follow because he's kind of operating on a much higher level. Yeah, than yeah, me, but I think what clever. he's saying... Yeah. It, 
is a very similar thing that we were talking about with CSS. This He's critical of JavaScript. It's time to move on from it. It's, I think there's a bit of a move to let's sort out our, make our operating systems and our browsers better. And I think with browser interoperability going on at the moment, that's why we're seeing big advances rather than let the sort of libraries that are developed on top um, have to make up for the shortfall. And I think that's what we're seeing. You know, I think there's been this division that's gone on, which is definitely influencing WordPress at the moment where, and it seemed logical where, you know, PHP was the way of getting the dynamic web. And then you kind of realize with um, things like React that you could have this um, uh, single page application with mm. JavaScript mm. Um, where you could uh, serve up data to the client without them having to go back to a HTML document and refresh and get the whole document back again. So it seems the future, but I see there's a there's a question in of whether that was the right move because it moved, if you like, with React and and all of this felt and view and all this to these kind of frameworks which are not exactly dealing with the the fundamental language HTML. It's serving it up via um, yeah. JavaScript. So I think that movement is happening at the moment. Um, do you, sort of technical. Do you, you mentioned uh, in the show notes this this thing, HTMX, which I confess yeah. I'm not really all that familiar with, but is this, is, this some, um, is this some endeavor to do what you've just described, the single page application and all of the different technologies that can do that? Is it, is it, an, is it the idea of having that in the HTML, now HTMX yes. spec, so that there's a way of doing that natively without having to rely on some framework to to make that work. Yeah, I struggle to understand this stuff because it goes mm. a bit over my head, but the, the logic of it does seem like this potentially or something like it could be the future um, because of the frustrations that a lot of people have jumped on various different libraries. And of course, there's always a better one than the last one. You keep having to learn a new one. And this, you know, it's not it's not HTML any longer. It's not the basic language of the web. So what this is doing is saying, well, okay, we didn't get what we wanted in HTML5, but we chucked out the baby with the bathwater with this. Why don't we use uh, HTML and then we'll make it, um, make kind of hypermedia capabilities um, right. better with some additional JavaScript. And effectively, what you do is you just link in this JavaScript, which is, I think it compresses down to something like 40 uh, kilobytes. But uh, as people have been, I mean, it's very new, but people have been experimenting with it. And it's a case where someone rewrote uh, an entire SaaS app, which was built with React using this. And the saving in terms of the amount of code that was needed was uh, 66 point something percent. So wow. it's kind of a third of the code. And you think, ah, you know what? This is, it does bring you back to HTML. It does make you wonder whether this whole, and also, I mean, some would say that what we have, because we talk about the RESTful API, you know, we've got this sort of in our JSON files, this, this information sitting there, ready to be served up into the browser at the click. But many will say, well, these JavaScript solutions as they are frameworks are not actually truly that anyway and this actually would get us closer to what that ideal is anyway so you do th i do think this is potentially something that could shake things up a lot you know yeah you're really into simplifying things at the minute aren't you you know yeah you, you want to yeah. get the page load as low as possible you want the technology which is providing that page to be as as simple as possible and is this something is this something that you would like to happen? Do you feel that over the last decade, really the last decade especially, we've we've just made creating the internet, so all the technologies, all of the different pieces in the background, have we just overcomplicated things that really, with a bit of hindsight, we could have just added into the HTML spec? Yeah, that's been my thing. Keep it simple, mm. stupid principle, yeah. I think, is, is, is there built into the W3C. And I think it's been quite effective, if not, I mean, it doesn't deliver the things that people have necessarily wanted, but it's been cautious about what it has added. And I think, you know, why we see the CSS spec and browsers working together, because I think, you know, the web's been around long enough to understand that probably the demand for certain things for CSS to do in terms of layout and maybe things like pop-ups are appearing. 
are now are going to be here for all time as far as we can see so they can enter into the spec so i think there's a sort of you know back to the douglas crockford this sort of game back to if the browser can do it then you know let's go back to the earlier native languages and uh, not overcomplicate things with additions so i mean when you jump on something like react effectively you know this is a solution created by facebook you know to solve their needs at the time where things were where they were but you know uh, with hindsight was that the best way because it 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 saw a fork in the road where you've got your html people going one way and your javascript people going another yeah yeah it's interesting i guess the I guess all of these things, like so, you mentioned pop-ups. I, I think you're right. It's pretty clear that that is not going away. Okay, it, it may tail off in use, but it's now yeah. so widely deployed. I think we can decide. Okay, humanity is okay with pop-ups. We're we're, we're all right with that. <laughs> yeah, and various other things. I'm struggling to think, but the point it being, you can't put something into the spec and then take it out. So they've got to be seriously yeah. careful about what goes into the spec because if people start using it and it becomes the bedrock of the internet then removing it at a later date because i don't know it mm. becomes uncool or people think oh no it, this is not the, the 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 primary way of doing it yeah you can't do that so you've got to get it you only get one chance and if you put something into the spec you've got to keep it in the spec yeah and i think the you know w3c because because of the way it is, I mean, obviously it's got Tim Berners-Lee at the head of this, but everybody is elected, you know, to do the roles. And because it involves people from, you know, all of the globe, the big companies um, with expertise in different media, I bet, you know, as far as I can understand, I, I saw um, uh, Rachel Andrews saying she's put a proposal forward. And you just say, when you put something into a working group, it never stands up for very long mm. because, you know, accessibility experts are bombarding it straight away. And people, f it's got so many different, you know, ideas and, the, and very much the cream of the crop, you know, people who are really operating on a very high level with lots of experience, putting, you know, bringing it together to work on something to implement it. Always with that, I think, cautiousness that comes with Tim Berners-Lee, you know, yeah. um, about, not overcomplicating stuff so yeah it moves too slowly so we invent frameworks and stuff to get around it but uh does yeah, the fact it just... that it moves slowly is that one of its best features with hindsight is that a good thing because then all of these different things you know you mentioned react a, a several times there th these things can be created and we can figure out what from that is useful and then it can feed back to the leviathan slow moving spec and eventually we can put those things in i guess i guess if they moved at the the rate of facebook uh the yeah you know the yes. html working group if they moved at the um the, the speed of facebook i think it would just be the internet would just be far messier than it is already yeah exactly i mean they needed to didn't they this growing network needed to be able to do more and deliver better so it's created its own solutions external to what would be coming out of the you know, the, the spec that the W3C look after. It's, there was a case, you know, where I think, you know, at any point they can make a wrong turn. And that, that has happened, of course, with stuff that's come out in the spec yeah. stuff in HTML, which is a, it was a mistake, but it stays in there and it's supported. But there was a good example I heard with Grid, apparently the original the Grid. Obviously, oh, right. for a long time, we needed something like the Grid spec. It's, it's so obvious. That's how you lay out a page. You need something, not this floats. Um, Flexbox was better, but it really didn't take care of the whole page. Yeah. This is obviously needed. And it could have come a lot earlier, but it, it could have come out as a big mistake where, if you understand it, there's a, the intrinsic and the extrinsic, uh, extrinsic um, grid. And basically, when you say where you want things to put, that's... Um, you know, explicitly where you want to put it. And that's what could have gone out in the first place. But it real, you know, as you've moved on, you realize that having this automatic grid where you put more content in and the grid knows where to put it because it's not, you know, explicit has allowed for so much now, which is building on top of that and the way that we build. So it is interesting with, you know, you know, perhaps even 10 years of something not moving there. It does mean that you know, it, it gets all of those years and all of that yeah. brain power to yeah. not make a mistake too quickly. Yeah. Right. So it, it, a lot of people, it's like battle tested, isn't it? A lot of people yeah. um, 
figure out, okay, there's limitations to this. This is probably a superior way of doing it. And it looks like the, we were talking about a five-year cycle. It looks like that kind of thing. You, yeah. you really need to try things with external tools for three, four, five years. So Grid, as the example there, has been around for a long time. It's been improved and it's now at a point where it basically can do more or less everything that most people, I think, would want to do with it. So now maybe it's time to start thinking about pulling those things in and making them like the core bedrock of the HTML spec. There are a lot of things, you know, that people do. I mean, obviously, if you stick, you're fairly safe, aren't you? At least in terms of what the web is itself, if we assume that is HTML, then <clears throat> HTML and CSS are pretty safe if you learn that and you can do as much as you can with that, then that's fine. And then it, uh, that's my standpoint now is keep it simple. Start and learn what's there and things have improved on that very much recently. Mm. And then in addition to that, you might need something. You And frameworks... Um, many of the, uh, say, if we take the CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, you know, often they're for designers, but they made very, very similar kind of designs, if you like, mm -hmm. and they were of their time. Um, they make up for some skills that perhaps the designer doesn't have, so allows them to do stuff. And Tailwind, again, is for a lot of back-end developers, I think, who couldn't get on with CSS. And you can understand it because it's doesn't quite have the logic of a lot of the stuff that they work with, you know? Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I, I think they're still valid, um, but you can see that they're likely to lose their popularity with so much moving into native CSS that solves some of those initial uh, problems. You know, they didn't have to learn every hack that was going to make things work. Yeah, it feels like if you were to say the word bootstrap or yeah. tailwind in 20 years' time, nobody will know what you're talking about. Whereas that, if you say HTML and CSS, I think there's a yeah. fighting chance that they'll still be in use. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, a lot of people are defending the CSS you know, preprocessors like yep. SAS and yep. LESS. And uh, only months ago, I, thought, I took a course to do SAS. What it told me is that I don't want to use SAS, but, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I, I can see why... <laughs> I can see why people who have to, I mean, for me as a solo person in charge of everything, I, it's over the top. I mean, I can see why it's still be used, but it's really rapidly losing its unique benefits because most of the cool stuff that's been in there for some time, you know, the CSS is going into CSS spec because it's kind of proven itself over a long period of time. So I can see them, you know, they're going to slowly disappear, I think. Do you have any intuitions? So obviously we, we've talked a little bit about the fact that HTML and CSS in particular, I guess mm. you could throw JavaScript into the mix there, um, are the kind of foundational pieces, mm. HTML being the foundational piece. Do you mm. have any intuitions as to whether that will even be a thing in, let's say, 50 years? Because I don't really know. I mean, are we going to be working on text-based documents on screens or is it going to be more kind of an immersive thing? Are we going to have, I don't know, it's getting a bit ridiculous, but, you know, glasses that we interact with um, or something that we wear on our faces? Or if Elon Musk is to be believed, we'll have things implanted in our brains that will allow us to to access the, <laughs> the web more broadly. I, I, I don't know. I guess HTML is really bound to a screen um, yeah, and the yeah. DOM and all of that. I don't know. I, I'm curious to see what where it goes at the minute. That's what we've yeah. got, but I don't know. I'm the same as you. I mean, who knows? Um, I mean, I think in terms of, because that's what we deal with. I mean, we do web design and I think web design is fundamentally kind of HTML and serving it up. Right. But I think the internet could be, you know, the World Wide Web would go. A search, it would, you know, World Wide Pleb, I don't know what it's <laughs> called, but, you know, it'd be something else. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I look at my, um, I consume a lot on my phone and I'm really not entirely sure if it's a native app. Obviously, if I'm on a web browser, then I know that I'm looking at HTML, but I'm not really sure if I go into, let's say, my note taking app. I'm not entirely sure how that information is getting to me or in what form it's being passed over the wire, whether there's any HTML there or not. I don't know. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, there is an interest because I think there's a tendency, you know, we always want to be innovating. We always want to be jumping on the next thing. And I, I'm not like that. And I think because there's still like big problems. I mean, you know, WordPress, I mean, I'm quite critical, I think, of the the jump, if you like, to 
uh, Gutenberg and and um, the JavaScript route with it. Mm. But there is just nothing out there that's solving that CMS problem for people <laughs> other than WordPress, really. It's the biggest one out there. It's still solving problems. So even, you know, the people who just think, uh, PHP, flipping heck, and then they hate the JavaScript stuff on this may still feel the need because the that that problem hasn't been solved yet. There's no clear Jamstack alternative CMS that that is winning everybody's hearts and minds. Yeah. So by saying that, are you are you fairly set? I know your usage of WordPress is dropping because of the nature of the work that you're wishing to do. But you're yeah. you're fairly optimistic that WordPress as a solution, you think that'll let's try to stare ten or fifteen years into the future. It's got twenty years under its belt so far. Do you you fairly optimistic that it'll be around? I don't know, honestly. I mean, I feel personally looking at it now, and I don't think there's any chance when Matt jumped on, if you like, the the JavaScript way, that seemed the sensible the the single page application route. I just think it was a little unfortunate they forced it into core rather than kept it as a plugin. Because that could allow for a different, it still be this PHP based system, and most of those are dying because people don't need that live. But really, the PHP system is only the framework to house, you know, the JavaScript as um, Gutenberg. Now, I might be wrong, and that might take off. I just feel it was unfortunate, but I still think, in terms of a, you know, community around it, and the sense that there is this WordPress, if it, if it can be remain stable. So for me, if I need a CMS, it's always still going to be WordPress. I might strip out all the Gutenberg stuff and, and do it my way. But you know, the only difference of why I'm moving away from the WordPress is that I just use it now as a static site builder. Yeah. And I, I realize my clients don't need the CMS. But so yeah, I think you know it could go any direction, couldn't it? WordPress, and it could be there in. 20 years. It depends how it's managed, I guess. I think what we love about technology is the fact that there's always something new and shiny on the horizon. So, yeah. you know, you, you, you've got this brand new iPhone and all of the apps that go on that, and you've got your new Apple computer or, you know, Windows got an update and it can now do this thing. And you go and you see something new on the internet for the first time. We love things to yeah. surprise us and for it to be new. And I think, I think with WordPress, the plugin architecture of it keeps that excitement going. You you may be utterly disinterested in what's happening in core, um, although you may be, uh, in my case, I'm quite excited about it. I think there's a lot of cool stuff yeah. going on there. But um, you, you can, I think it'll still be fascinating because people are still building things around it which do new and remarkable things. So for me, the the metric is if that architecture keeps going and people still build fun things on top of WordPress, I think it'll I think it's got a huge, huge future. Yeah, I it, it's kind of got two uh I, I think that's great. And I've often looked to a lot of simple plugins to do what I want, trying to keep it simple. But one of the difficulties with the demands of the people who are attracted to WordPress is that they buy a new plugin lifetime deal or something, and then they want all their other plugins to support use of that so they can integrate it. So that is one of the things that as a, <clears throat> as a plugin producer, you're kind of forced into, you know, if you're not supporting or integrating Elementor, you know, with its 13 million new, uh, websites out there, um, you know, you're not going to carry on. So you have to keep adding to your own individual plugin. And I think that's one of the, one of the difficulties with the plugin architecture, you know, mm. we have yeah. to have this. People expect this interconnection so they can do it because they, because increasingly more people, I guess, because of the success of page building, have come to expect that they don't need to touch code and somebody's going to take care of it if they buy enough plugins. Yeah, you know? we're we're um we're guilty of kind of hy hyping some things up aren't we and you you are stepping in completely the opposite direction you don't want any of that hype you don't want any of that uh plug-in bloat you just want to keep it nice and simple and i think there's something quite i don't know there's something a bit like fireside chat about that there's, you, you're getting back to the roots of it all and i know that sounds a bit poetic but i think there is yeah. something quite poetic about it you're just keeping it nice and simple honing your skills in one particular area you've kind of worked out that you know, being on the cutting edge is not something, A, that you probably would enjoy. And you might also say you're probably not capable of doing that now. Time and life 
time in life is, is you know, learning a lot of new languages is probably going to be mm. difficult. So honing those skills, yeah, it's probably a nice feeling. Yeah, and it's nice to have that kind of control of it. Mm. Yeah, the interesting thing about not being able to predict WordPress and how it's going, because I'm in some ways, I see a, a sort of a negative route because of the way it's gone very commercial with lots of, you know, most of the big plugins are owned by a very few number of uh, companies. And that's, you know, worries me a little bit. So I want independence of that. But also, I remember that when I came into WordPress, you know, 2007, you know, when I was trying to get some understanding about whether this was a good bet you know, there was so much negativity. I mean, it was like, oh, it's dead. It's PHP. Yeah, it's dead. You should be using yeah. Ruby on Rails. You know, don't do that. Oh, it's not a proper CMS. It's a blogging platform. And, you know, that's when I came in. And people have never really used it for what it's been intended for, you know. Yeah. Um, and and I think, you know, so that's why it's really hard to predict, you know. Where It'd it be might kind, go. Of, kind of interesting if you could re rewind the clock 20 years. So when Matt... And Mike Little forked B2. I wonder if you rewound the clock and played it again. I wonder if WordPress would even get where it did. You know, were there a bunch of total random coincidences that happened? You know, maybe something that was written just on the spur of the moment in the first few days of that fork happening that just got somebody involved in the project that might otherwise not have done it. Perhaps if somebody had, you know, got got something else going on in their life, they wouldn't have turned on the computer at that moment and seen something which got them committing a further thing. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't think there's anything intrinsic about WordPress which guaranteed its success. I see it as a bit of a bit of a lucky a lucky thing in the same way that, you know, Joomla didn't work out, Drupal didn't work out. Some reason WordPress did, and I'm never quite sure what that is. The only thing I think it's lost a little bit of is that I think a lot of the people who dominate have a commercial interest in it. So they, I think, you know, it really did build around that open source community where people were just scratching their own itch, individual developers trying to create something out of it, you know, this sort of kind of simple unit and that where I think a lot, there's a lot more cynicism, if you like, and a lot more stronger competition um, when they go into it. They, people will invest in uh, WordPress and created something for WordPress because they're already predicting the, the future sales of it and what might appeal to the, the present audience of WordPress. And I think some of that individual plugin makers has been lost, but maybe, maybe it could be pulled back. I, I mean, for me, it's, it might be an odd thing to say because I've been a, 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 against Gutenberg, but I think if I was coming into WordPress now, I think the best option would be to kind of stick to WordPress and perhaps to uh, encourage the plugin community, uh, these plugin community plugins rather. Yeah. Um, so you've got this kind of one, uh, one, um, source, if you like. Yeah. Cause that's the problem with WordPress and it? it's not like Wix, you know, they can't, you don't get to control the whole code base you know yeah yeah it does seem like a, a solid foundation a framework that more or less everybody can get to grips with i think it's going to become more and more difficult for people to understand the internal mechanisms of it but i think yeah. the fact that it's now it's now able to do with a point click interface albeit you know it may be confusing for a little while um i think a lot of that will probably maybe even allow it to grow. We seem to be at a turning point at the minute. It's obviously had this inexorable rise and that's flattened out and possibly going down a little bit. I don't yeah. know. We'll have to, like, like we said, right at the top of the show, staring five years into the future, I've no idea. But I, 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 would, I would imagine it's possible for it to grow. Maybe it's already got to the point where 40% of anything is, is not possible. In the same way that, you know, when we were kids, we could watch the telly and more or less everybody would watch the same program. So two or three programs was what everybody was talking about. Yeah. Maybe that's going to be the case on the Internet in the future. Because, we, you know, we've had these products, these giant companies coming into existence, Facebook, Google, uh, not a company, but WordPress as a CMS dominating. But maybe the future is a bit flatter than that. You know, we'll have a lot of players and everybody will just go to the one that suits them best. I don't know. If you were, if you thought somebody wanted to go into web building now, um, I didn't discuss this with you earlier, so I'll put you on the spot. Yeah. What do you think? What would be your advice for them? Oh, I, I mean, it really depends. I think if they wanted to do it as a career, in other yeah. words, to make themselves sellable to mm -hmm. any kind of agency, 
I, I guess you'd probably be say, look, learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, get those skills under your belt, then you can go anywhere. But if you wanted to drop into a job quickly and not do that hard work, I'd say, yeah, learn how to learn how to do things with with WordPress. You know, you can build a site in minutes once you've mastered those skills. And so mastering the the, the Gutenberg interface and mastering how you can create layouts with blocks and templates and patterns and all of those kind of things that's mm. definitely useful as well so yeah i guess it depends what you what you want to do you know whether you want to start and freelance for a freelancer it feels like go for wordpress but if you want to work in an agency and really get your skills to the point where you can sell yourself to any agency maybe maybe not wordpress i don't know yeah i think your advice i, I saw someone talking about advice for new devs obviously people yeah. who want to code uh, for a living and it's just saying you know how horrendous it is, you know, because you can learn React, learn yeah. Svelte, learn Vue, whatever one new one comes in, you know, jQuery goes out, something else comes in, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's another guy talking about, you know, investing in Java and then um, uh, CoffeeScript. Uh, yeah, remember that? Good wow. pilot for that. Yeah, and all these kind of things. And they're just saying it's a nightmare, but what their advice was the same as your advice is basically get the fundamentals, get your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript under, and then learn these things which build off those things and do it that way around. And I do think, and I think you and I are a little bit fortunate. That's why I think it's easy for me to reconnect a bit this time with the HTML and CSS, even though I'm totally out of touch, is that we started that way. And I think if you were to come in now and start with a page builder, um, you kind of have to backwards learn it you know you, kind of, you yeah know, yeah you might yeah. go oh well, i'll do a few bits and then i'll find a css framework to stick on top of this and then i'll get to understand it and then eventually we'll get to the root cause and i think i, huh, I think interesting, yeah, yeah. What, you know yeah. It, you'll end up working backwards when you do that where i think if you start with those basics and if you're doing it as a profession then you might decide that wordpress is the cms that you actually need for what you're going to do for your clients and you might decide that you know working knowing JavaScript initially, then you might want to be working with the React API in Gutenberg or something, you know, but yeah. there would be later decisions, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think the other yeah. nice thing about deciding to learn HTML and CSS is that you get a lot of mileage quickly, you yeah. know, it, it, from zero knowledge. I feel that like in a week, you yeah. could actually be really dangerous with it. You know, you could, you could have learned a significant amount of what you need to do inside of a week. Then pile on JavaScript. Well, I feel you're, you're years in the making there. And then <laughs> yeah. throw in all these other things, which which are obviously re required in certain industries now. Then you're years and years in the making, and some of that will be thrown out the window. So, yeah, I do think that's good advice. Um, yeah, I've seen so many yeah. people giving it in different, you know, CSS as well only recently. Um, uh, I mean, Bowel was talking about the same thing as the roots to learn it, and it all goes back to that and if you like i'm i'm back plugging a lot that's missed but as i was mentioning to you that you know there was two lines of css which solves so much responsive issues that i used to scramble around with because i was doing it within the page builder and now i wouldn't do it that way i mean you know the page builder still has its merits for what it needs to do but i would have you know it's it's so much better to know that I could do this natively with CSS if I needed to in a very simple way. Yeah, we're going to have to start a podcast, the CSS podcast or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really, yeah. Uh, dig to the depths of my ignorance. Yeah, there's that. probably about 25 of them already. Um, yeah, <laughs> so the, the, the foundational stuff, really, if you want to be on the internet, you need an it, – I wrote a few things down here. You need a connection to the internet. That's pretty much guaranteed. You need a cable going somewhere or a 5G yeah. or a 4G connection. You need some kind of TCP IP stack. You need HTML. You need a browser. You need CSS and JavaScript. And then I wrote under that, I think everything else is basically window dressing. After you've got those yeah. things, you're off. Yeah, exactly. It's Yeah, the rest is your choice, isn't it, after that? So yeah. I think and the one doing it professionally, I think that's the way to start. Um, but everybody seems to not go that way. You see, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? You know, if a page builder gets you in and you're learning backwards, then at least it got you in and got you started. Well, that's right. I think that's a really good point. It's not like you were trying to express, yeah. you know, shame on you for yeah. uh, for doing it that way around. I, I think in many cases, it may prompt you to to learn things. You know, why the heck won't that thing go there? 
And then exactly. you dig into it and somebody gives you some advice and some help and you figure, okay, it's because of the thing that's containing it and the, the selectors that I haven't taken account of and all of that. And uh, and you learn. But yeah, you're right. I mean, learning backwards that way, I guess it must be hard when you uh, encounter a difficult problem because yeah. you've then got a lot of learning just to get that one problem fixed. Whereas if you do it yeah. the way you're doing it increasingly, because you're building it from the ground up, you're probably going to only encounter little problems often. And it's it's conceptual, isn't it? I mean, CSS, you can learn it and you can learn what this does, but it's conceptually trying to work out kind of how it will all hang together. And actually, at the moment, no one really knows because there's so much new stuff. No one's worked out so it's all going to quite interconnect. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's fascinating stuff, but concepts is really the hard thing. You lose those, I think, if you don't. Uh, you know, build up with the language, but yeah. So our predictions for the next 20 years of the internet are, we haven't a clue, mate. No idea. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the it's way we like It's not too it. long. Yeah. Yeah. It's not too long, is it? I think answering our own question, is it too long? No, it isn't. I think, you know, that, and, and even if it's a language which isn't well supported, I think the key thing is if it still works to do the job that you need it to do, that's probably more important than spending your whole life worrying about what the next thing that might take its place is, you know? Yeah. You just, you've just ended it in the perfect psychologist kind of lie on the couch and tell me about your father <laughs> moment. You've made us all very happy there. So yeah, we'll end it there. We'll knock it on the head and uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Are we going to do this? Are we going? Well, this is the opposite of psychology. Yeah, we're we're going to try and do an episode. Well, we're going to talk to AI, aren't we, for the whole episode? Oh Lord, what can go wrong? The intention <laughs> is to put out an entire episode where every answer or every thing that we basically say is created by AI. How well this will go is yet to be seen, but that's it's the going to be a that's bun the fight enterprise. Yeah, as we argue with it. That's right. Yeah, it'd be interesting. All right. Well, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yep, I like that. Cheers, bye. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. As I said at the top of the show, absolutely boatloads of things going on in there. If you're new to web development, maybe some of that is a little bit fresh. If you are a seasoned web developer, there's probably a lot in that to get your teeth into. Either way, if you have a comment, please head over to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number 349, and use the WordPress commenting system over there. We would surely... Love to hear everything that you have to say. The WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by GoDaddy Pro. GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24 7 support. Bundle all that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more by heading to go.me forward slash WP builds. And we really do thank GoDaddy Pro for their ongoing support of the WP Builds podcast. Okay, just a few bits before we go. Don't forget that we have a This Week in WordPress show live every Monday. It's at wpbuilds.com forward slash live. As are these shows, we've got a Gato GraphQL series with Leo Lozovich, but we've also got Sabrina Zidane and her Speed It Up show. You can find out all about these and get dates for your calendar head to wpbuilds.com and search down, look for the black row entitled coming up and you'll be able to find what's going on and when over there. That's it, I guess, for this week. Hopefully you'll join us again soon. Stay safe. Have a good week. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>